What is going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and today we're going to be talking about Arduino interrupts. It is a feature which I believe to be extremely underutilized and sometimes even misused but it is extremely helpful in many, many different projects. And I've actually had to use a hardware interrupt at work recently, which saved me a lot of troubles. And it is something that is inherently uh, useful in many different platforms, not just Arduino. Therefore, I believe it's extremely important to have a good grasp on interrupts. So we're gonna take a deep dive into how interrupts actually work, where they can be useful. And then we're going to showcase a couple of different projects, which will make it extremely clear as to why you would need to to use interrupts and how they are used. So let's start talking about what really is an interrupt. And at their core, interrupts are essentially triggers which may be instantiated through software or hardware events, depending on the platform you are using. So what kind of interrupts do we have access on the Arduino? So that really depends on the type of board that you are using. So as you can see, I am currently in the reference guide for the Arduino and depending on the board, like I've mentioned, if you have the Uno, Nano, Mini and any other Atmega 328 based board, you will have access to two digital pins, which are going to be pin two and three. And then obviously if you move up in the uh, board selection, you may have access to more or less pins depending on the board. And some of the recent uh, revisions, some of the boards that I own personally will have a lot more interrupts. And depending on the, the different platforms, if it's a Raspberry Pi, if it's a BeagleBone, you may have access to even more interrupts on the hardware side. On the software side, it is a bit more complicated and we'll talk about that in a different tutorial, but essentially you can create what's called a sleep mode for the Arduino and use a timer based interrupt, which would internally be um, essentially triggering a awakening function and not rely on any external hardware. So an interrupt we'll call an external function, which is more commonly known as an interrupt service routine or an ISR function. So interrupt service routines do have some very specific constraints and they do not behave exactly like some of the other functions that you have written for the Arduino. So first, of, first and foremost, an ISR cannot have any parameters and they should not return anything. Therefore, you must be extremely clever with your code and how you structure those uh, values in order to be able to pass them around. Generally speaking, those um, ISRs will use something that's called a volatile variable which can still be used between uh, the different pieces of your code. Also, the ISRs should be as short and fast as possible. So the goal here, the goal of an interrupt is generally to execute a very small function of code or to change the state of your program, but not to necessarily divert into an entirely new program. And last but not least, you do want to uh, avoid using something like delays inside of an interrupt because first of all, it will bog down your program, but also so it's using the exact same timers as your normal normal program does and therefore will interfere with the functionality of the board. So an interrupt will execute immediately. It will stop everything that the program is currently doing in order to jump into the interrupt function and execute the code which resides within it. Furthermore, the interrupt will also return to the same point within the software where, where it had previously left off. Now to drive this point home, here's a very crude example of your execution. So line by line, your code executes until an interrupt is called on line three. So the function obviously jumps down to the ISR immediately as it is interrupted and goes into lines seven, then eight, and then a nine. And after executing those lines within the ISR, it jumps back into line four and finishes executing the routine. And of course, if you have a loop, then it goes back to line one so on and so forth. So that's just a basic example of how the code will behave. So let's look at a rather basic example, which is essentially an LED blinking in three different states, which uses a lot of delays. And we have a button which is tied into one of the inputs. And we're going to discuss how we can make this significantly better. So looking at the setup that we have here, as well as the software, the button essentially triggers a way to turn off the LED when it is pressed. However, you will notice that as soon as I press this button, what will happen is that the LED will keep blinking until it reaches that cycle and only then it will actually turn off the LED. And this is the same if I try to uh, press the button and un unless I really time it well, then it will never happen. So essentially the LED will only turn off whenever 
I uh, time this really well or I keep holding the button down at the right moment. So as I had referenced before, you can't just use any digital pin for your interrupts. And here I am moving pin number 10, which is currently connected to the button into pin number two of the Arduino Uno, which is the first interrupt. All right, so before we dive into the code, let's talk about some of the ways that uh, interrupts are actually being triggered. So there are several different ways and it is described very well in the Arduino reference. So first of all, you have the syntax, which is going to be attach interrupt, then you specify the pin. In our case, it's going to be pin number two, the ISR, which is the function which it's going to call, and then the mode. So what's really interesting about the mode is that you do have quite a few options and they will vary based on your application and the way the hardware works, as well as uh, what the hardware really is. To uh, really quickly go over these parameters, which I will explain on paper right after, you have a low, which is to trigger the interrupt whenever the pin is low. So this is a continuous trigger whenever the uh, signal is low. There is a change, which is triggering the interrupt whenever the pin changes value. You have rising, which is when the pin goes from low to high and then falling for when the pin goes from high to low. Let's look at those in detail in order to better understand those functionalities. All right, so let's start with the low setting. So in this case, first of all, I'm drawing a, a signal, which is going to be a square wave between zero and five volts. And for the low setting, our interrupt is going to be calling that function continuously whenever the signal is at the low or zero volts level. The change setting is essentially a hybrid between rising and falling. So just like before, I'm drawing the same square wave between five and zero volts. And in terms of the change, this will be triggered every single time that you have either a, a transition between zero and five volts or from five to zero volts. Setting your interrupt to a rising call will make it so that the function is only called whenever a transition on that hardware pin is detected from zero volts to five volts. Setting it to a falling setting will do the exact opposite, make, making it transition to the ISR function whenever the pin is going from five volts to a logic low or zero volts. All right, let's start modifying our software. So first of all, I'm going to declare a pull up on the pin at number two to which our interrupt function is connected. I'm also going to declare the attach interrupt function, which we've discussed earlier, and it's going to be on that same pin at number two. It's going to call a function called interrupt function, and it's going to be based on a low setting because I want to uh, trigger that LED to be off whenever I press the button. I'm going to declare a void function. As you remember, it cannot return or it cannot set any parameters. I'm going to put all the uh, necessary code, which is essentially going to turn off the LED, upload it to the Arduino and see how our function looks. So now that we've modified the code and included an external interrupt, here's what the functionality looks like. So as soon as I press the button, the LED is immediately turned off and it remains off for the duration of the press because of the low setting. So do remember that as long as the low setting is maintained in this configuration, then the um, interrupt function is going to continuously execute that ISR, which essentially brings the LED low. And so as you can notice, there's absolutely no delay. It is completely different than what it was before. And I still have all the delays for when the LED is blinking and those are not affected by the interrupt in at all. So as you can see, I can interrupt it within the cycle. I can interrupt it at the end of the cycle and there's absolutely no issues with my hardware. Now, although the example I've used may seem underwhelming at first, interrupts are actually used in many devices you have probably used yourself. So here's a data sheet for the MPU 6050, a video on which I've done uh, quite a bit of time ago. And this particular device is actually equipped with an external interrupt, which you can wire into the Arduino and essentially capture certain events which are critical to your application. So if we search for interrupts within this data sheet, we will quickly find a section which essentially goes over how the interrupts are configured on this particular device and how they can interface with modules which uh, essentially monitor these particular interfaces. And if we scroll down all the way to the uh, to the pinout, so I believe that's going to be interrupt, it's going to be right here, we do have a pin which is dedicated to be a digital interrupt, which you can tie again into your Arduino BeagleBone or Raspberry Pi in order to collect some very critical and mission critical data for your particular device and or application. 
Another very common use of interrupts would be in something called a sumo bot competition where a robot is essentially trying to push the opponent out of the ring before he falls out himself. So here the interrupt is acting on the bottom sensor of the robot, preventing him to essentially leave the arena and interrupting that motion whenever he pushes out. So to finish off this video, I do want to mention that interrupts are extremely useful in many different applications. However, they can also be a nightmare in disguise. So when used improperly, you can start writing a lot of code in your interrupt functions and essentially bug down your program to a point where interrupt functions are taking over and you're essentially unsure of what's being executed at one time. So if you're start starting to write too much code into your interrupts, do ask yourself why and start using some different schemes or perhaps rework some of your programming. And if you have any questions on interrupts on any other topics, do uh, leave me a comment down below. And if you liked the video, make sure to share, like and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.